Christianity is the religion of women because it emphasizes sentimentality and mendaciousness, but, Islam is the religion of men and thus deeply contemptuous of Christianity. This is the opinion of the German philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche. He thinks that Christianity is the religion of lament, suffering, weak, underprivileged, poor, unfortunate and in short, decadence. He thinks that Islam is the manly religion which is the counter-movement against Christianity in ancient times. Nietzsche thinks that Arabians are a strong race. He writes about Arabians in his book The Will to Power, the concept of power, whether of a god or of a man, always includes both the ability to help and the ability to harm. Thus it is with the Arabs, thus with the Hebrews. Thus with all strong races. The Nobel Prize winner Elias Canetti also thinks that Islam is a religion of war. He writes in the chapter named, Islam as a Religion of War, of his highly famous book, Crowds and Power, devout Muslims assemble in four different ways. 1. They assemble several times daily for prayer, summoned by a voice from on high. The small rhythmic groups formed on these occasions may be called prayer packs. Each movement is exactly prescribed and orientated in one direction, towards Mecca. Once a week, at the Friday prayer, these packs grow to crowds. 2. They assemble for the holy war against unbelievers. 3. They assemble in Mecca, during the great pilgrimage. 4. They assemble at the last judgment. Canetti writes further, as in all religions, invisible crowds are of the greatest importance, but in Islam, more strongly than in any of the other world religions, these are invisible double crowds, standing in opposition to each other. According to Canetti, it is the most comprehensive idea of a crowd the Mohammedan can imagine. No one can conceive of a larger number of human beings than that of all those who have ever lived, and here they are pressed closely together on one spot. This is the only crowd which cannot grow, and it is also the densest, for each single man stands face to face with his judge. According to Canetti, the division within Islam between believers and non-believers is absolute. Those who have faith and those who do not are destined to remain permanently separated and engage in conflict. The religious warfare is considered a holy obligation, and therefore, even though not as all-encompassing, every earthly battle serves as a partial reflection of the divided groups in the final judgment. In the same chapter, it is written that according to one of the leading authorities on Islam, Muhammad is revered as the prophet associated with both combat and warfare. His initial accomplishments within the Arabian domain stand as a lasting legacy for his community's future endeavors, the struggle against non-believers and the expansion, not just of the religion itself, but of its realm of influence, which aligns with the dominion of Allah. What holds significance for Islamic combatants is not merely the conversion of others to the faith, but rather the submission of non-believers. The Quran, considered the sacred scripture inspired by God and delivered by the Prophet, unequivocally affirms this belief. In the Quran, it is written like this, and when the sacred months have passed, then kill the polytheists wherever you find them. And capture them and besiege them and sit in wait for them at every place of ambush. But if they should repent, establish prayer, and give zakah, let them go on their way. Indeed, Allah is forgiving and merciful. Palestinians and their sympathizers may like these verses of Quran, have you noted those who fled their homes, though they were in the thousands, fearing death? God said to them, die, then revive them. God showers his grace upon the people, but most people are unappreciative. Because of this, we decreed for the children of Israel that anyone who murders any person who had not committed murder or horrendous crimes, it shall be as if he murdered all the people. And anyone who spares a life, it shall be as if he spared the lives of all the people. Our messengers went to them with clear proofs and revelations, but most of them, after all this, are still transgressing. The just retribution for those who fight God and his messenger, and commit horrendous crimes, is to be killed, or crucified, or to have their hands and feet cut off on alternate sides, or to be banished from the land. This is to humiliate them in this life, then they suffer a far worse retribution in the hereafter. You shall fight in the cause of God, 
and know that God is hearer, knower. Who would lend God a loan of righteousness, to have it repaid to them multiplied manifold? God is the one who provides and withholds, and to him you will be returned. Have you noted the leaders of Israel after Moses? They said to their prophet, If you appoint a king to lead us, we will fight in the cause of God. He said, Is it your intention that, if fighting is decreed for you, you will not fight? They said, Why should we not fight in the cause of God, when we have been deprived of our homes, and our children? Yet, when fighting was decreed for them, they turned away, except a few. God is aware of the transgressors. Fighting may be imposed on you, even though you dislike it. But you may dislike something which is good for you, and you may like something which is bad for you. God knows while you do not know. They ask you about the sacred months and fighting therein, say, fighting therein is a sacrilege. However, repelling from the path of God and disbelieving in Him and in the sanctity of the sacred masjid, and evicting its people, are greater sacrileges in the sight of God. Oppression is worse than murder. They will always fight you to revert you from your religion, if they can. Those among you who revert from their religion and die as disbelievers, have nullified their works in this life and the hereafter. These are the dwellers of hell, wherein they abide forever. They plotted and schemed, but so did God, and God is the best schemer. Thus, God said, O oh Jesus, I am terminating your life, raising you to me, and ridding you of the disbelievers. I will exalt those who follow you above those who disbelieve, till the day of resurrection. Then to me is the ultimate destiny of all of you, then I will judge among you regarding your disputes. As for those who disbelieve, I will commit them to painful retribution in this world, and in the hereafter. They will have no helpers. As for those who believe and lead a righteous life, he will fully recompense them. God does not love the unjust. We will throw terror into the hearts of those who disbelieved, since they set up besides God powerless idols. Their destiny is hell, what a miserable abode for the transgressors. We have taken these verses from islamunraveled.org. Other violent verses are like this, they wish that you disbelieve as they have disbelieved, then you become equal. Do not consider them friends, unless they mobilize along with you in the cause of God. If they turn against you, you shall fight them, and you may kill them when you encounter them in war. You shall not accept them as friends, or allies. They do not observe for a believer any kinship or covenant. It is they who have transgressed. If they repent, establish prayer, and give charity, then they are your brothers in religion. We make clear the signs for people who know. If they break their oaths after their treaty and defame your religion, then fight the leaders of unbelief. Verily, nothing is sacred to them, that they might cease. Will you not fight people who violated their oaths and determined to expel the messenger and yourselves and they attacked you first?